jumped on me. I ran in there and he jumped on me. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're making me look stupid, bro. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it, man. Make me look good. This is just some of the stuff that we took out of the garden. These, these are just like sticking right out of the ground. That's green beans. Yeah. Those are the small tomatoes, the big tomatoes. We got two of them too. Yep. They are huge. We're gonna have a lot of green beans. I know a lot of you probably don't care about gardening and vegetables and stuff, but listen, if you want to know what's in your food, this is the best way to do this. So a couple of things that I want to point out right away, you can see there's a lot of weeds in between everything. I definitely intended to put down some mulch, but what I figured was I really should wait till next year to do it because what I want to actually do is just put down a layer of geo over everything and then just make little holes where I want to make the plants. So if I put down the mulch now, then it's going to be a problem because I'm going to have mulch underneath the geo and that's just wasted. These are the watermelons and we planted those really late so I'm not sure if they're going to get full size. This is about the biggest one we have right here. I mean it's the beginning of August so maybe they'll get a lot bigger. But we got uh, some pretty big squash. Look at this one. That one's huge. It's almost ripe. Uh, the cucumbers for some reason are like really short but really fat too. Not sure what's up with that. I've never seen that before. Maybe that's just how they grow. I'm not really sure, but they're pretty spiky right now, too. There's a lot of cucumbers here. This is more squash over here. I don't know why that's green. Well, because it's not ripe yet. Oh, is this a watermelon? That is actually a pumpkin. I know it looks like a watermelon, but it's a pumpkin. Hmm. Maybe they start out green to change yeah. colors. Yeah, and then they turn into orange. Hmm. Maybe that's how... Wow, look at this one. That's cool. It's right next to this huge squash that's here. That's going to be our biggest pumpkin right there. I want to see that thing. I, I think those normally grow right up to the fall, right? So that one should be pretty big, probably like two feet around when it's done. Hopefully. These carrots are really taking off. You can see the the stems are just sticking right out. We already picked some, so. Yeah. Wow, look at that one. That one's like two inches around. I can't believe how big these have gotten. Dad, can I hold the camera now? And here is the green beans. There's lots of them, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot more before we're done. I don't know, maybe it's hard to pick it up on the camera, but there is just hundreds of tomatoes here. And then these cherry tomatoes, there's like thousands of them. One really neat thing about this property is we have a lot of fruit trees. So this right here is a pear tree. And I don't know if you can really see all the pears on it, but there is hundreds of them on there. So what's nice about that is they drop pears all the time. These little pears right here are good food for the pigs. Even these rotten ones, they love that stuff. I actually just picked up all the pears here this morning, so this is just since then. There's a half a dozen of them right here, and that's just since I picked them up a few hours ago. Like they drop every day, so if you collect them and give them to the pigs, it's like free food. Because otherwise it's just going to rot.
have more time for one. Yeah, let's go check the apple tree. Yeah. This is a crab apple tree. We have a bunch of these. You can see it's loaded. These aren't ready yet, though. So you can make jelly out of them. But in another couple of weeks, these will just be dropping out like crazy, too. So that's free pig food. And, and they love that stuff, too, because it's got sugar in it. I don't know what those are. It's definitely not blueberries. I don't know if they're poisonous or not, but I'm not even going to touch them. There's another little apple tree right here. There's actually a bunch of them over here. And the nice thing is if I have to take down an apple tree like I did for my house, I had to take down one little small one, I save the wood and I use it for smoking meat with. Makes it taste really good. So every weekend we usually smoke a brisket or some ribs or just tenderloin or whatever. Is this an apple tree? Nope. I'm not sure what that is. We got this one really nice pear tree right here. This thing is huge and it is loaded. Yeah, this is all free pig food. This is like two months worth of food for them. Apple tree right there, apple tree right there, right there, right there. That looks like a walnut tree right there, which I think there's a couple more over there. We got all different kinds of variety. Another pear tree right there. Yeah. Free pig food. Free egg pig food. It's like going on an Easter egg hunt. Like inside of here, I'm smoking some ribs right now. I think one of them just hit me in the foot. And I'm to the point where I'm cooking it with the liquids there and I'm using apple wood from one of the trees that I took down when I was digging for my house. So usually on Saturdays what we do is come here first thing and start smoking some sort of meat and let it smoke throughout the day and then we'll have it for dinner and we'll have like a late dinner and it'll be cooking for like eight hours. Yep. Here, give me the rest of them. Let me see. No. Wait, 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 wait. Crab apples in there. Oh, you put some crab apples in there too? Yeah, some of them dropped. Yeah. So I put some crab apple in there. Yeah, they'll love it. They're gonna love that. That's like dessert for them. That's all sugar. Like dessert. Yeah. Hey, no, no, no. She's over there, so I'm not really worried. Yeah, she's the mean one. Yeah. These are all those chickens that we hatched, and they're all different kinds of chickens. It's kind of neat, actually. Just like a big variety of them. Eagle! Seagull! I like that one right there. That one's pretty cool. That one. Look at seagull! Seagull. Yep. Yeah, that one looks like a seagull. <laughs> oh, I have my penguin in there. Your penguin? Which one's that? Oh, uh, the black one? Uh, yeah, I think it's that one. We've had this chicken for a few years now, and this thing has just like a bad hair day every day. It's a rooster, and it protects a lot of these other chickens from the other roosters. Yeah, well, they cut the wings the wrong way, and now I can't fly. Yeah, his name is Stormy. We kept him at our house for like two years. Look, look, I'm going there. Yeah. I think this is one of the girls from the first batch. Yeah. <laughs> Dad, my little thing. What is happening? Got some Thanksgiving dinner here. All right, guys. So today we're all going to learn about the not so manly stuff about homesteading. So let's go. Pick some vegetables and fruits. Okay. 
So for today, we're gonna pick some tomatoes because we got an overabundance of them. So we're gonna pick the tomatoes and then we're gonna do some canning and we'll all learn as we go because I've never done any of this before. Is that look good enough? Yeah. I got another one in there. Yeah, there's a whole bunch. So just to let you know, we've already taken about at least five five gallon spackle buckets full of tomatoes out of here. And there's gonna be two or three times that amount still left here. There's one in the brain. Let's start right here and just don't even move on until we got all of them. You know, like these ones underneath here. Uh, there, there, there was just a spider in it. Wow, there is a lot. I'm gonna go over on this row. All right, so we got all this, and this is about two minutes worth of picking right here. Whoa! Oh man, look at that! Oh, we got two. Oh man! Right, let's look bring them both. Thing. Yeah. All oh, right, no more carrots man. though, because these are still doing pretty good. Ooh, Let them get bigger. Ooh. Yeah. Show the camera. Yeah. Thing huge. Is huge. Yeah, they'll get a lot bigger next year because this wasn't really deep enough for carrots. Next year, I'm gonna add another foot of soil on here. So, guys, it's good when kids get excited about this kind of stuff because this is not stuff that kids normally get excited about. Oh my God! But Caden plays farming simulator, so he's starting to like put two and two together in real life. It's kind of neat too. This thing is like huge. Yeah. Ooh, it's one. God. Dude, what? And two carrots. One yeah. One, and another, like a tiny one. Well, let's go start the process of making some salsa and some spaghetti sauce. Yeah, they have that crack in them. That's how you know they're ready.
You know these guys are going to love it. Poor Lucas never knows what he's getting into coming to work. One day we're pouring concrete, the next we're making sauce and salsa. All right, so I'm ready to make some tomato sauce and salsa here. I got some ingredients. You can see what I got here. Sweet peppers, onions, jalapenos, mini sweet peppers, lemons, olive oil, white vinegar, cilantro, garlic powder, salt, citric acid. I also have some fresh cilantro, some fresh basil. So out of all those tomatoes that I processed, we got 13 one gallon bags worth of the processed material. Last night I actually did some trial runs on some salsa and some tomato sauce. So I'm a little bit better versed on how to go about this now. So what I have left is four gallon bags here. I have eight gallon bags here. So I have 12 one gallon bags left. And like I said, I have a lot more in the garden left, but I'll probably cube up some of them and then freeze some of the other ones. But so for right now, we're just gonna make some sauce and some salsa out of what we got right here. Unfortunately, none of this stuff came from my garden. Next year, I will make sure that everything comes from my garden. So here it is about 
six hours later and here's my stuff, the, the chunky stuff. It's perfect. I like to add a little cinnamon to it too. It makes it really good. And then here is the pureed stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and can this. So I've had this idea that I've been tinkering with for a little while. I was thinking since we have five ducks and they just hate being cooped up in that pen, they love being in this water. But whenever you put them out, they don't wanna go back in. What I wanna do is put the old chicken coop over here. Remember, this is all stuff that I was dozing off a few weeks ago and I was getting stuck even with the dozer. It was really bad, but it's all settled in here. So let's see if this crane will drive across here without sinking in.
This little chicken's name is Nugget, and we keep him at our house, and he follows us around everywhere, like a little puppy dog. Is that Nugget? I wanted to leave the ducks inside of that coop overnight just to let them know that that was their new home. So now let's go let them out of there. So hopefully this island should offer some sort of protection from other animals to them. So if they stay on this island overnight, we're thinking that we could just leave this open and they can use it for shelter. But it would be a pain in the butt to go on this island every day and open and close that and let them in and out. So we're just gonna try to put a big thing of feed in there and hopefully it'll last at least a week. So we only have to go in here like every weekend. You can see they're pretty happy over here though. So hopefully they're smart enough to stay on this island at night. All right, so we just put these little chickens in here. These are the ones that we hatched from the eggs. So what I want to do today is put some nesting boxes inside of this chicken coop here. We got a chicken right here that's trying to lay right now. This is all wood left over from the other projects. I got to use this stuff up, so I'm going to try to use some of it. I know it's like a drop in a bucket, but... At least if I can start using up some of it.
All right, so I guess we're done in here for a while. The only thing I think I need to do in the future before it gets real cold is do something with this door. I was thinking of putting like one small door on the bottom and then the other three quarters of it can be a separate door. That way we can just leave the bottom one open for the chickens and when we need to come in here, we open the top one. I got really nine spots because you got five on the bottom, four on the top, and then you got some roosting spots on the top. And I put that board across there. I did get some things accomplished that I really didn't care to do right now. I don't, really don't have the time to do, but something that needed to be done. And you know how things go when you don't do them and then you're scrambling at the last minute to do them before the cold hits. So now I can concentrate on working on my house more. There's a lot of stuff that I'm doing for this homestead thing that took a lot of time. But three quarters of that stuff is things that I needed to do and then I never have to do it again. And then next year, it'll be so much easier. There's some repetitive stuff that needs to be done every year, but for the most part, the garden, this thing right here, the pigs, the chicken coop, all the stuff inside there, all the work that we did here is all stuff that doesn't need to be done again. So now we just kind of need to maintain. And next year, maybe we'll get some more chicks and put them in here. That's another thing that got done that I don't need to do again. It's one of those things where when you start getting going on something, you just got to kind of keep going on it and then you get over the hump and then it's kind of all downhill from there. So that's the point where I'm at right now. So I'm not sure if there's enough to make another video about the homesteading stuff. Go, we'll see how much time I have in between building my house. My house is the most important thing. Just to give you an update on how the canning is going, I have about three dozen quart containers of spaghetti sauce and then I have like a half a dozen of salsa. And I still have a whole bunch of tomatoes. Plus I have like four gallon bags of tomatoes in the freezer. And I anticipate probably another four to six gallons of tomatoes that I'm gonna put in the freezer. And then that way I can make fresh sauce from that stuff. So I don't have to make it all right now because I don't really have the time for any of this kind of stuff. Never in a million years would I imagine that I'd get that many tomatoes with that small amount of plants in that late of the season. So now I know for next year. So these homesteading videos are gonna continue. I'll either get another one in about another month or early next spring. But either way, I'll see you guys on other videos that I'm doing.